What's up, my name is Guy. I'm a full-time filmmaker obsessed with self-development. Welcome to the channel where I discover every single week tips, tricks, and tools that help me be more efficient and effective in art and in business. And I share those findings with you so that you can apply them to your own journey of self-development. In this ongoing video series, we're taking a close look at Rome research and how it can help us derive more value from the learnings and experiences that we have every single day. In this video, we're looking at the next set of functions in Rome. We're gonna talk about to-do lists, linking blocks, using the sidebar effectively. And at the end, I'm sharing the minimal system maintenance that I do every once in a while to keep my craft clean. As always, I'm putting timestamps in the description box below if you just wanna to jump to one specific topic. Otherwise, let's get started. But before uh, we get started, I actually wanna show you something. This is the currently pinned tweet on the Rome Research Twitter page. And this is from the founder of Rome. And, and look at this, he says, you don't need to learn anything besides writing a few words you think are important in these brackets and hitting tab. The rest is just folks getting excited and building on that foundation. Why am I showing you this? I think it's so important to um, keep this in mind as we're going on, as we're going further in this video series that all of these things are really useful. They're really nice to have, but they're not essential. Everything that we talked about in our introductory overview of Rome, which is linked down below, is enough to use Rome very efficiently, very effectively. So I think that's a really important high level principle to always keep in mind is, am I actually saving time developing these systems or am I putting more time in to development and maintenance of my system than it is saving me time? Really important. But with all that being said, let's get into it. Here you're seeing my uh, Rome video series page on Rome. I thought that was actually a really good page to uh, start with because it incorporates pretty much all of the things that we're gonna talk about today. Um, all of these functions that we're looking at fall under the umbrella of the forward slash functions. So when you type forward slash, here you see all of the next level functions that we're ultimately going to be looking at throughout this video series. Um, and the first thing here is to do. So as you can see on the side here, all of these things have uh, shortcuts or almost all of the things. I'm not sure about the Pomodoro timer. Here's what we wanna do, right? Uh, you wanna click on to do, and now you have a to do item. And all that does is, um, let's say learning about Rome. <laughs> it's a pretty vague to do item, but here you go, right? And it pops up like this and you can tick it or you can untick it. So that's like you see up here, I had set myself a goal to make the first three videos and then post them. I ended up only making two because I dropped the personal intro vid on my channel. Here you see for each video that I've posted already, I've made a separate page where I outline um, the things I wanna say in more detail. And uh, once I was done, I checked it off and I could just kind of leave it sitting there. One framework that I really like that I've seen on Ali Abdal's channel, I'm linking to his video on Rome below, is the Nibbles framework. You can see over here, I um, have a Nibbles page in my shortcuts. Uh, the way you can put a page into shortcuts is simply by clicking the star uh, button up there and it's gonna add it uh, to here. So what happens in a Nibbles page? Nibbles is basically anything that popped into my head that I'm going to take a closer look at later on. I think it's a fun word because it it's this idea of like, you've took a nibble of something, but you need to like eat the full thing. So you put it into your nibbles page and then later on you can, you can eat it or you can digest it. I think he uses the word digest. So I tag it with hashtag nibbles and it pops into my page here. Um, so same here, when I watched the movie Arrival, which is based on this collection of short stories called Stories of Your Life and Others, it reminded me uh, of the time that I read this and it was before I started using ROM. So I'm, I'm uh, putting a note here that says, re-listen to the audiobook of Stories of Your Life and Others. And uh, I already made a page for it so that, you know, when I do, I can just go on here and I can start writing my notes on it because they're honestly such amazing stories. So Ali, I think, uses the coding function in Rome to write a piece of code that basically only shows the nibbles that have not been tagged with the hashtag digested. Um, to me, instead of using the hashtag digested, when I want to boost something off of my nibbles page, I simply delete the hashtag nibbles and boom, it's gone. Um, but I don't here, I'm <laughs> reversing this. So <laughs> I think that's kind of a useful framework. So when you're doing your daily notes and you're like, um, I don't know what's on my desk right now. Um, okay, here, my I wanna install my monitor on my camera. So I'm gonna say uh, install monitor. If it's something that's not super urgent because the setup is fine for me now, I don't need my monitor right now. Well, I can just tag it with nibbles and boom, it's gonna pop in to my thing here. And you know, actually I wanna make this a to-do, so I'm just gonna use command enter and there we go, it's a to-do item. 
So the next thing I want to talk about is linking to blocks. I mentioned in my Roam overview that Roam allows you to link to specific blocks, um, but I want to explore this in more detail. There's two things you can do with blocks. You can link to them or you can embed a block. And the, there's a small difference with it. So if you mention a block, you just press the standard brackets two times here and you type in uh, I'm going to reference something on this page to make this easier. Uh, I'm going to reference nibbles because we just talked about that. So here you see all of the references of nibbles that pop up in various blocks around your graph. Uh, let's say the one we just created. I can reference this block here. And when you reference a block, this is unilateral. So it means that you can double click on here and it takes you to the original block. And if you change the original block, let's say <laughs> I'm just going to write ha ha. And you're going to see in some order, haha. And when you go back to your own video series, look, it updated it here, right? So it now has a haha in there. But I cannot change this here to update the original, if that makes sense, right? So it's like a copy of it that updates when you change the original, but it doesn't go both ways, right? So this is just a reference to another block. Um, and that can be really useful. But if you want to go one step further, you can embed a block. And for that, you just go forward slash, and you can do block embed. And now you have the same thing here. You just um, type in nibbles, and it's going to embed the block, right? And the difference there is that it's bilateral. So if I change, if I delete the haha -ha in, in here, it will update all the references of this block, the original and, and any embedded version of the block or any reference to the block as well. So you know, like universally, everything will update. It basically shows you everything you need to know in here. So this is a block embed, and again, if I typed haha in there, it does change the original block as well. You can see up here, haha, and it shows me all of the things down below that are part of this block. So I'm deleting this here again. And of course, when we go back to the Roam Video Series page, um, it's also updated. So that's really useful, right? I don't think, I don't know of any other program that lets you do this, where it just updates universally like that in such an easy way. That's why referencing blocks can be really, really useful. Next up, we're going to talk about the sidebar. The sidebar is hands down one of the coolest features in Rome, and that'll really unlock your potential to take Rome to the next level. So whenever you see a page that you want to view, but you also want to see your current page at the same time, you just hold Shift and you click on that page with Shift held, and it's going to open in your sidebar. And then you can you know, toggle this open. So this is the script that I, that I did for my intro video where uh, since I'm still learning about YouTube, I've scripted out my first couple of videos. And so here you actually can see the script. And you know, I could open this up and go down here. I can close it again. I can compare first drafts and second drafts. And this sidebar doesn't just hold one page at a time. It can hold many different pages. So you can click on another one like this one here with shift pressed. And boom, it opens up here. But you still have access to your other one. And that's really cool. You can you can also pin a page. So if if I want this page to always show when I open up the sidebar, I can pin it here. And let's say I delete those two. And I click on how to sign up for Rome. And look, it also shows my pinned page. Even though I clicked to open this one up, it's pinned the other one as well. So this function is useful across the board. But one of the uh, best uses I have found for it is when you have a, a brain dump or like an outline that you want to reference when you're writing a more refined version, uh, be that of a blog post or a paper or a video or a film. Um, let's say you're writing your more refined script over in your main page, but you want to reference your brain dump, your notes on various things over here. Um, and then you know, in, in your brain dump, you see that you've actually referenced a different page in there that you also want to consult at the same time. No problem. You just press on that page with shift and it pops down. You know, it pops in down below. So it's a really easy way to reference all of your inputs and inspirations that go into your more refined version as you're writing it. So as a last point, I want to talk about the minimal system maintenance that I do with Rome. I mentioned in my previous videos that I am very liberal with linking to pages in Rome. And what that means is that every once in a while, you're going to have some pages that really didn't turn out to be as useful as you thought they were when you first created them. Usually that's because they're just kind of sitting there and they're empty and they're not used for anything. And I don't think there is anything wrong with that. I don't think it screws up your graph in any major ways by having a couple of unused pages there. Um, but every once in a while, if you don't want things becoming too messy or too convoluted, there is a very easy way to maintain your system and clean it up a little bit. And I do this like 
honestly once a quarter. Like I said, it's why I love Rome so much because you don't have to do this very regular system maintenance that can suck up a lot of your time. So if that's you, if you've imported all of your notes from Evernote or Dynalist and you've tagged all of these pages and now suddenly you're realizing, wow, it's a little bit too messy. I've tagged a couple too many pages. I wanna clean this up a little bit. Here's the easiest way I found to do this. You just go to your all pages. So what this does is it shows you all of your pages in Rome. Um, sorted by default by your last updated date. And a, a simple way that I found to do system maintenance is simply going to first your word count, um, and you click the upwards arrow here to show you the zero word counts first. So here you see all of your pages that have nothing on it. But you can see um, I might not have written anything in my Rome page in particular, but it does have four mentions. So I'm mentioning Rome a lot, and it's it's you know, it's populating this page with blocks from other pages. So that's a valuable page. I don't want to delete this. But other times you'll have a page like this where you have zero word count and only one mention. And in this particular case, um, I might actually leave this here uh, because I might take some notes on The Great Gatsby. But um, if I felt that this was a useless page, I could simply click here and delete it up here. And that'll remove the mention from wherever you tag The Great Gatsby. It'll just remove the brackets from that. But of course, you can always uh, tag it again if you were to write about The Great Gatsby again. And this time you're like, oh, I do want to tag it. Um, you can do so, and then you can find the previous references in your unlinked references on that page, and you can just add the previous tags to it. And then after you're done with word count, you can sort your uh, pages by mentions. So here you'll see a whole bunch of pages that were never mentioned anywhere. And that's gonna be a lot of your date pages because you don't really mention or reference date pages a lot outside of your daily notes section. So it makes sense that these here have zero, but the word count is high, right? So I've written in these pages quite a lot. So sometimes you'll come across one like this at zero, zero. That's a date page. I don't really feel the need to delete my date page. And then once you find one that may not be valuable as it stands, you can either delete it or you can decide to link it to something else. Sometimes it's just a linkage that's missing, right? So you can decide, oh, this is not useful as it is, but it would be useful if I linked it to this page. So there you have it. That was it for this week. Hit that subscribe button and the little bell next to it. That way you get a notification when the next video in the series comes out. There'll be a lot more on Rome, but also on investment, on other productivity tools, and of course, on film. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next week.